Hello, everyone. This is you, Sai. Thank you for coming back and joining me on Let's Talk today. It's Tuesday, Giving Back Tuesday special edition of Let's Talk. We're talking to people in the food industry, chefs, general managers, as well as restaurant tours. How they're staying resilient through this tough time, but at the same time, still find ways to giving back to our community. And today, my guest is Meet McCormick, and she's coming in from Nashville. Hello, I'm so happy to be here with you. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing very, very well. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm so excited to learn everything about you and about your restaurant, Pinewood. So during this mm. difficult time, tell me a little bit about your restaurant and what you're doing. So my restaurant is located on my working farm. So I'm an organic, gra- I'm an organic farmer, biodynamic, and I'm a grass-fed, grass-finished cattle rancher. I raise pasture wood-raised hogs as well and chickens for eggs only. I also have bees for honey. And so I am really a farm-to-table chef and restaurant as my restaurant is a 1920s gas station and general store located on my farm. So I am planting it, growing it, picking it, cutting it, serving it, cooking it. <laughs> and so and you're a chef food. as well. And you're and chef, I'm a chef as well. I'm a wellness well, chef. All that involved, can we just say you're a prepper? Are you a prepper? I'm a prepper. I mean, you all need to come to my house. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, I, I've been, and I'm a little bit like Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory, so we're clear. So like, I was built for this, okay? I mean, I've been walking around in a mask since I got here. I mean, that whole hand, I'm a hugger, but I'm not a handshaker because I'm always like, when did you last pee? <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely, from because I'm Asian, I've always, always been about, I never really enjoy handshakes. So this, this little pandemic has made it really easy for me not to shake people's hands either. So we're, we're connected yeah. in that way. Well, what a fascinating, amazing, amazing place that where you, you, you're serving people through literally from across the street to another, from your farm to the restaurant. Tell me a little bit of history, how this came about. So, I mean, I was the worst cook in America. I mean, I shopped via the the pictures on the box. I couldn't cook anything. If it came out of a can, I was like, nice. If it was frozen and was pretty, the picture, we were having dinner. Um, I was intimidated by the kitchen. I didn't like the kitchen. I was mad about the kitchen and I was too busy for the kitchen, but I was afraid of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I then got very sick. I had an ulceration, the total circumference of my small intestine. And And this this was 10 years ago, almost 12 years ago. And the truth is I weighed about 80 pounds and I couldn't drink water or eat food. And my mother had suffered Crohn's disease in the 1980s. And my mother then died 1990. So I um, watched my mother not be able to eat. And then we were very poor. And when she was hospitalized and sick, we couldn't eat because we didn't have any food. So then I did all the things that you do in life. You know, you want a different life. You want to change where you come from. And I created a really fantastic life for myself, um, a big life, meaning a big point of view. And then I got sick and I looked into the face of my daughter and I saw myself and I thought, how do I change this? Mm -hmm. And if the only thing that's touching the lining of my intestines, the ulcer is food. And how do we, that's, if that's influencing the bacteria that's creating the ulceration. So I started off in macrobiotics, working with a macrobiotic counselor. And then for me, a big point of view, it was too narrow for me. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. It taught me the basics of cooking. And then I went to culinary school in Los Angeles um, because I wanted to master French and American classics because I really wanted to know what we were craving and why. Mm. And then it just upped my, my cooking game. And then I became a contributor on The Better Show, a national syndicated talk show out in New York City. And I realized that there was a million me's out there. And there were a million people that wanted to eat better and didn't know how and wanted to feel better. And so then my husband, we've always had the farm in outside of Pine, uh, in Pinewood outside of Nashville. And my husband um, bought the store and I was mad (laughs) because I did not want to have a restaurant. I want to brag to y'all that I was like, my dream is to have a restaurant. No, it's my hell. (laughs) I was like, this is my hell. But, um, But it has become my blessing. And so that's, and we were already raising all this beef and growing all this produce. And there wasn't any available in the rural county that we live in, Hickman County, um, going to any restaurant. So I had this gorgeous food and no one was eating it. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. So then I sort of 
you know, the thing is about life is it gives you things that you may not have wanted at all. And they can be the greatest blessings that ever happened to you. Mm -hmm. So my sickness and then becoming a restaurateur is all based out of one of the most painful experiences of my life. And it's turned into one of the most beautiful. And it was a necessity. And a necessity. You know? And I'll, yeah. I'll share this with you as well, because um, about eight years ago, I think for me, because in the fashion industry, I was working with a lot of celebrities and there was a lot of pressure and we all strive to be the best what we can do. And I stopped taking care of myself as well. And on one day on a photo shoot, my assistant came up to me and said, you need to go to the restroom and look in the mirror. And I was mm. like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, you need to go now. I went to the mirror and right side of my face was this. I had Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy. From the stress yeah. on set. I was shocked. I mm -hmm. was scared. Yeah. And I covered half of my face like I had an itch on my eyebrow. And I went back on set, finished the session with a celebrity. And I got in my car on the way home. I call every doctor I know. I call mm. every every holistic doctors, uh, Eastern doctor, Western doctor, MRIs. I went through two months of trying to figure out how to face this problem. Nobody could help me. Mm -hmm. Nobody understood what was poisoning my body. I made a huge change then. I changed my yes. diet. I changed yes. my my exercise. I started doing yoga and I reset mm. my life into what I said, grounding myself all over again and then made those rules that I mm -hmm. won't work after these hours and don't call me on weekends. I don't care how much money you have because <laughs> my my health was that important. And it was through that blessing, through that horrible time, as you said, that set a new boundary of who I'm wanting to be. And that became the new version of me. It took about six months. I healed through yoga. I healed through better eating, clean eating. Mm -hmm. So I can completely understand what you had to go through. And through mm -hmm. that, you know, you're inspiring so many others out there to eat clean and eat and eat differently. It's really yeah. about, it, for everybody's different. You know, I didn't become a vegan or vegetarian. I know a lot mm -hmm. of people do take that part of it. Um, I don't like to use the word extreme, but choices um, mm -hmm. to heal themselves. I adjusted. Um, no sugar, no and uh, uh, no soda, yeah. and all these little little adjustments. And when I began to see those adjustments made a difference for me, for me, for me able to survive in a healthy way and still maintain my my desire to be in this business, that was a revolutionary for me. I I, I needed that, and 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 what a great amazing experience for you that through your own health that you're able to now help others. And do you find that do you have a community of people that come to you? understanding oh. and knowing your history and said i want to learn more how well yeah help. i've absolutely i mean so i opened the restaurant and we're in backcountry tennessee i mean this big time i'm on your show homie <laughs> because I'm, well, just, I'm from I, guys wait a minute wait a minute i'm from terry ho indiana okay i live in and then we moved to robinson illinois when we immigrated to the united states it was a town of forty thousand people and one run restaurant and one little little old town with six stores and that's where i'm from so i can completely understand totally. the small town charm i am this i am the town from it. <laughs> yeah. i'm the farm I'm the restaurant, the gas station, and the mercantile. I am the entire town. And yeah, I mean, so I have a book out, My Pinewood Kitchen, A Southern Culinary Cure. And you better sign that <laughs> copy and send it over. I'm sending it. And I've been a contributor on Today in Nashville. It's an NBC affiliate here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And I've been on the show for four years, the whole time. So it's been a really huge blessing how my life came into food and how it's guided me. So people do know about Pinewood and they drive an hour each way to eat there. And wow. they do know that my basis is to take Southern food that we love and crave and just shift the ingredients and make it better for us. So we don't have wow, to healthy feel- healthy Southern food that tastes good, guys. I'm coming, that, that's newsflash right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's your horse. We need, we, that's, yeah. your, that's your horse riding in. <laughs> 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 I mean, honey, we all love Southern cooking, but that deep fried it. stuff scares the, scares the bejiggy out of me. I love air fryer person. I might throw everything air fryer so the oil goes away. But oh, yeah. if you can but, serve me a good, healthy Southern cuisine, I can, and when I grow I can, it, and I serve it. I and 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 you might not know this, but I grew up as Future Farmers of America. I was in FFA. I was in 4-H. I was showing yes. cattle. So I, I think you and I are separated by birth. <laughs> I think it's you and me. Okay, you and me. 
<laughs> so I do. So, you know, and I, and I love the playfulness of food. I think, I think we think of wellness and well food as punishment. You know, we're like health food. Well, I don't use that term. I just, mm. I just use fresh food and I change the ingredients and I make it delicious. And I want to bring people in because I'm a big, a huge part of my writing and my life is the science of the microbiome. So changing the plants that we're eating changes the bacteria, the good bacteria, which I call the gut homies, yes. um, because they're your ride or dies and you want them to ride and multiply. Okay. <laughs> you know, you want to support that good gut culture. And so, yeah, people come to Pinewood and it's been amazing through the Rona, as I call it, because through the Rona, I haven't had to lay off one person. Wow. Uh, I have uh, increased my hours. I'm actually hiring. Any of y'all homies want to work? I'm looking for another <laughs> chef. How you doing? <laughs> and um, uh, what else? And I have been able to. And how, how, do you, we, how do you make that possible? Is it because that you are in, in more a rural area? There's no hot spots and there are not a lot of no, people. No, Nashville is a hot spot and everybody comes from there. I kept, I fed all of my team has been able to shop, not have to shop for groceries. So basically what happened is we feed everybody from the restaurant in the farm. One. So uh, cut so exposure, the traffic you, out. So exposure. you limited the exposure. You yeah. kept the community. And that's what we've been saying a lot on this show is that if mm -hmm. everybody would take their part and do the same. Yeah. And do the same. Take care you of your people. Take care of the community. And, and, and you will actually be able to be together if you mm -hmm. and your neighbor quarantine the exact same way. Mm -hmm. and You, you are can hang out. You can hang out, you can cross yeah. over. And I have to have a great family that, um, Yanni, which is, uh, I interviewed her with kimchi avocado, that she, her family and my godson are the same age. So they quarantine the same way I quarantine. So we cross over, the kids can visit each other so they don't mm -hmm. go crazy same. with all this energy they have. And I think that is so important. That's a lesson that we can see from your, just your habitat, that how you have yeah. cultivated that and make sure that your staff is empowered to know that you can be healthy, if you practice these practices yeah, and you, so, so you, you have autoimmune disease. I have and, five autoimmune diseases. And I this have, stays with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. I have Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, celiac and psoriasis. So I'm still this smiling. Is, Who are you? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm still here. Okay. Homies? So I have had to work to be here and I am going to be here. I got to put my glasses on so I can see you all better. I just want to tell you, okay? When you have been as sick as me, you don't mess around trying to be somebody else. Mm. You're like, I am in the room. I am serving other humans because that's the greatest blessing. And I am creating kind community. You know, I run a kind kitchen. I don't have bullies. I don't have aggressiveness. I don't have an anxious kitchen because nobody wants to eat anxious food, homies. But if you're looking for a job, you call me. This? I'm a spiritual <laughs> person, right? I feel like if you're an angry chef putting angry food, angry energy into that angry salad, I eat it. I'm going to feel it. I'm a believer in that. People think I'm cuckoo, but I believe that. Well, then we are the same cuckoo because <laughs> I run my kitchen that way. Like if you're, if you're crabby, I tell you, step off the line. Oh, if, you know, you. first of all, we're inclusive. So I have celiac. So the whole concept of oh, my kitchen my is how do we think of other people and what they need to eat and how do we take care of them, not be annoyed by them. So that changes the culture within the restaurant because everybody that's eating there is like, everybody that's cooking there is part of a community. And mm. then the community is the people that dine there. And then we've got really resourceful with creating these farm boxes and delivering whole cakes, loaves of bread, microbiome soups, any produce I can pick, meat cuts from the farm. So we have just been shifting, 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 shifting. And you know, I run a canning kitchen, like old school, we were talking about that, a canning kitchen where I make my own jam sauces and soups and hot sauces and barbecue. And then I'm selling that all online next week. I mean, everything wow. right now is like, I feel why I'm smiling, can I tell you? Because in this, this phase that we're in, if we will not be afraid, and if we'll operate from a place of kindness and gratitude, we're fixing to shine because the world is changing. There is no going back. There's only adelante, as you say in Spanish, forward. Mm -hmm. And forward is for me, like, how do I serve other people and reach them? And how no, do I support my community? Just, that is so beautiful. And, and, and one of the things that I have learned personally through this experience of talking to people like you, inspiration, inspiring people like you, is that the word service and gratitude put together is servitude. And that truly is what this servitude. is. Servitude. 
servitude. That's what I have learned through this whole process because when you serve, the gratitude comes, not just from the other people, but you get that on your side and that takes mm -hmm. the loneliness away and that takes the scaredness, scared. We, we, we're all scared. Listen, yeah. there are moments that when I turn off this phone, I'm no longer have someone to talk to on the other side. I have a moment of breakdown here and there. I yeah, have to me find too. Way, but absolutely. But, what, but when I get to speak to someone like you, who are so inspirational, who conquers all those things, and none of those things are hurdles for you, they're actually building mm -hmm. blocks for you and to help others. That's a true definition of servitude to me. And that's when I can smile and say, okay, in little ways, I am helping contributing to this community. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing about service is I love that because I, I live with a servant's heart. And I feel that each customer, when I get, we have to change the concept of service as thinking it's below us. It's something we should all aspire to. I mean, cooking, cleaning, taking care of another human being, setting a table, cooking a soup, you know, making a cake. Gosh, that's my blessing. There was, I was so sick for so long that I could not get out of my bed and stand and cook that now when I'm well, I'm on fire. My name is Fuego McCormick. Okay. <laughs> and I am like roller skating and playing the triangle. And I think that it's not just why people come to my restaurant in Pinewood to eat my food because it's delicious, but they come because they see a person who has found a way to get back up. Oh, they get you, experience. They're getting they get experience. <laughs> They is experience, a okay? It's a, it's, it's a, a ride. Get on the bus. We're not having food. We're having a ride. That's what, We're that's, having a ride because it's all going to end real fast. You know? You know I what? mean, every, this life need. is real fast. It's true. And thank you for making me laugh. Really, it absolutely. It's what a joy. What a joy. Because it, that that is the positive endorphin we all need. Good meals, mm -hmm. good laugh, and good communication around people around us. And how do how does the community come to you now? Now that a lot of people cannot not allowed to travel, how does it work in your restaurant? It works really well now. So I have outdoor seating. I have umbrellas mm -hmm. and picnic tables that are socially distanced. And in Tennessee, here in Tennessee, we are, we are, you all, you all heard that. Y'all, right? we, we, we all are opening. Um, we're actually opening our insides of our restaurants everywhere. And just today, I had a whole moment. I'm going to tell you about it. Okay. This morning, I realized that next Friday, every restaurant, mall, and movie theater in the state of Tennessee will be open. And I realized I won't be able to compete with pickup and takeout because so many people don't want to pick up and take out. They want to go out. Mm -hmm. So I made the decision today that we're going to open at 50% capacity inside. My team wears masks and gloves. I have to be super careful because I am a high risk human. Yes, you are. And yes, I am. And so I'm going to keep my side of the street cleaned up and take care of me and my crew. And then, you know, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to encourage people to sit outside on nice days. And um, I've got to keep it flowing because I've got an entire, when you're a farmer and a restaurateur and you're, you are the grocery store, the mercantile, the gas station, the restaurant and the farm, the whole town, you have a, a lot of responsibility comes with who I am and the life that I lead. And that responsibility is for the people that I employ. And the farmers, the guys that run my cow crew and the people that pick in the fields. I mean, we haven't stopped. We've just wow. been going. I haven't had a day off. I mean, it's been a grind. But now I think we live with this virus. It's here. The Rona is not leaving yet. She is a stick around her. And so until she leaves, we have to learn how to live here with her. And that means we have to take responsibility. And so, I, I and I said this so, and a mm -hmm. few times on our last shows is that I feel like when we look at coronavirus, we can learn from it in this way. How coronavirus, the other COVID spread is six feet distance. And if you can convert that and we really have a different paradigm of thinking that six feet distance where your kindness should go first, mm -hmm. instead of six feet difference of running away from each other. Because being aware of that six feet is where mm -hmm. kindness can spread as well. We can spread kindness as fast as coronavirus can spread we can get through this. And that's what's so, so, so important to me. And that's why I'm having these conversations here. And I know that we had a conversation offline. You're like, what's a fashion photographer want to talk to me? <laughs> and for me, it, because I do have an audience in the business of fashion and what, and, and fashion are the most, I would say we're most um, blind 
um, fold it. When I'm blindfolded, but we're, we're, um, we have a lot of blind spots. We like horses that with these little blind spots and we focus on the beauty and the fashion. We can get very superfluous. We can be very, very much mm -hmm. superficial. And, but my passion's in food and I love food. And I have a cooking show in Asia that people don't know in America, but I do cooking shows in Asia. And I wanted to cross those two. Which is fantastic, by the way. I Thanks. love it. Thank I you. even like, I was so inspired yesterday after watching, I got my kitchen and I was like, oh, I want to make this. I was like, this is what I want to eat now. I would love it to see a little Asian Southern cooking. Oh, I could restaurant. do it. Oh, I can oh. throw down. You, you're I can make, make anything. Oh you could say goodness. me, turn this into cheese and it would be I cheese. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And it's so, it was so important for me to, to meet people like you because it, it grounds us. And the fact that you are, you're a farmer and my dad's a farmer. A lot of people don't know that my dad's a mushroom farmer and passion fruit farmer. So mm -hmm. we, the trickle down effect does affect my family's um, survival. And, and, and by not having restaurants open, it hurt the complete chain of people who are affected from drivers. As you said, you are actually a one stop place. One mm -hmm. place, if that chain gets broken, the whole entire system falls apart. And trying to come back together on that single day that government, gov the governor tells you is okay, it's not going to come back in that singular spot. It's going to take no, you, time. You got to keep, gonna... and you got to keep dreaming. You know, you have to get yes. inventive. You have to think about, well, what do people want now? How do I reach more people? How do we, you know, like in Pinewood, we, we are community. Everything mm -hmm. to me is community. So I grew up so hungry and so sad. And then I was so sad and so alone with my sickness that when I opened Pinewood and I had access to all this food, we have a sign that says, if you can't afford to eat here, we got you. If you don't have cash, I got you. And so feeding people, it's not just during the Rona that we do generous things. It's let's do generous things all the time. Let's What's take all? this and run forward and be generous and thoughtful and considerate and inclusive and then let's change the world. So my little backcountry place is changing the world, homie. But I, I love the fact that you can list up all these genetic markers of the, 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 uh, the diseases that you carry every day. But there's a marker in your DNA, this kindness that we need to amplify. And that is the truth. I, I think it's incredible what you're doing. I think it's amazing that you're still sending that positive energy around. And I can't wait for the day to come in and experience you. Not just the food, but <laughs> I want to get on that ride that you're on. <laughs> I want to drink I... that water you're drinking. because Drink my Kool-Aid. That... Drink your Kool-Aid. Actually, your Kool -Aid. It's, it's unsweet tea here in Nashville. <laughs> oh, well, that's not very Southern of you. It's supposed to be filled yeah. with sugar. <laughs> I know, but you know, we got to keep that microbiome healthy because I got a lot of living that I want to do. You know, there's a lot yeah. that I still want to do. I love the fact you talk about microbiome and the gut, the gut healthiness and in the Asian Ooh. culture and Asian food is so very important. And, and this little lovely thing called kimchi that in Korean <gasps> culture that eats a lot. It is all about gut oh, healthy. Kimchi. Let's talk kimchi. Did you know That's that the University of South Korea studied kimchi and that it killed influenza A under the microscope? Yes. I eat that kimchi on the regular. We need to get some kimchi berry in your farm and start farming kimchi. Let's do it. Backyard. Come. I want the I'll Rona to leave so you can come over and then we'll be making gonna... Instagram live stories all day, homie. <laughs> I'm going to connect you with kimchi avocado. Yanni Kim was a dear friend of mine and she's Korean American. Her mom has one of the best kimchi recipes and people are begging for her to put it, put it on her website. But you guys, you two together, it would be a hoot. You guys would be amazing. Kimchi you know, avocado. You know, is that great? <laughs> yes, amazing name. Like I you want her to be my friend now. You will. <laughs> I'm going to connect you two because you got the space. And you got the I manpower. Got the room. You got, I got the, the room. manpower. You start I got the dream. kimchi and you know what? <laughs> I'm going to have southern kimchi food. I'm going to count on that and I'm going to love it. Because honestly, though, all joking aside, microbiotic, food gut is number one place to really start taking care of your health and got to start from there. And that will heal your heart. Mm -hmm. That will heal everything else around you. And kimchi is one of the most amazing microbiotic food that you can have. And I can't wait to see that combined with some fried chicken. I mean, and listen, I do be fried crazy. chicken and kimchi. I'm, but let me tell you, the Done. thing is what I can't <laughs> wait for is more microbiome conversations and eating. Because listen, the one thing the Rona is showing us is that we have to take care of ourselves. We do. The that is of so that exciting is to me that. because once you start taking care of yourself, God, you, you feel so capable. 
But you know what it is too? One of the things I learned is this, it's called responsibility. We're no longer responsible for ourselves, we're responsible mm -hmm. for others around us. And when's the mm -hmm. last time we actually had to think of that? We're selfish creatures, no matter how much we give, but we're all still very selfish in much ways that we're protecting ourselves, mm -hmm. we're taking care of ourselves. But for the first time in history, that by being selfish, you're actually helping people. By protecting yourself, wearing a mask, it's helping yeah. others and people can understand that we're going to get into a whole different discussion about the mask but you, because as an asian person the asian culture when you think you will have a cold you wear a mask right. before you leave the house the reason hong kong has only few deaths is That's because right. the moment this happened everyone not by rule but by law they self-protect because for the courtesy of other and respect of others as a community we can get yeah. together to learn respect and yeah. have servitude we will get through this. And along the way, laugh, I agree. Like you. <laughs> you laugh like laugh. you. Courtney, I got to put my glasses on again so like, I can see you better. Corona ride. I have a Corona ride that you want to get on. <laughs> along the way, I have kimchi. <laughs> along the way, I have my <laughs> Well, you know what? We're in it and it's not, it's not going away. So we've got to be our best selves. And our best selves are funny and they're joyful yes. and they're loving and they serve. And they take care of ourselves, and we eat better. We eat better we, so we can be better. I couldn't dun, 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 dun. I don't know why well, I want to ride a horse right now with you, but. Dun, dun. <laughs> Well, and thank caffeine. you so much for being here with me today. And I do have to thank you by being on the show, part of the Let's Talk initiative. Can I do a little we plug of my book? Yes, my we're going to make sure. Kitchen. We'll put that on the link so people can go and download and buy and purchase. But one of the things I think is really important is to thank you for being on the show because the part of the Let's Talk initiatives that for every guest that comes on the show, we donate 500 masks to first responders. And for those out there who wish to match or help, you can go to LifeLet'sTalk.com. So we're so appreciative. And now, to this day, we have raised over 100,000 masks to for first responders. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Very little that we can and do that, hopefully inspire others to do the same and be responsible out there, you guys. And eat well, please eat well and support your local communities. And for those in Nashville, take that one hour drive to support the lovely Nima McCormick, please. We love that. <laughs> but you and I <laughs> are gonna be friends for life. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> I mean, we're in now. They're gonna be like, where'd y'all meet? Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all right. That's <laughs> Could nice. be tender, but Instagram's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like a right swipe. Anyway, right. <laughs> well, I can't thank, wait to see you again. I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to sit down, have an amazing little picnic. And you know what? Have some amazing Southern iced tea because it's nothing like it. And I know because I'm from Terry Hill, Indiana, you are just only a skip and a hop away from me. And I love to be able to go back to the Midwest and visit you guys. Thank you so much for your time. And we'll be talking again soon. And meanwhile, thank you for taking care of your staff. And through that, you're taking care of your community. And I could not be happier to have this conversation with you. And thank you awesome. for your servitude. Thank you. Thank you for including me. Absolutely. Bye, homies. Um, I don't think there was a possibility to keep you off the airway. <laughs> <laughs> You're in it. I know I'm here. I'm in, in it now. It. Look out. Watch your back. <laughs> Watch your back. Well, actually, I encourage you to do more lives. Please click on lives. Do I would more do more lives. lives. Do more lives. Spread your okay. energy. We need it. We absolutely need it. We absolutely need it. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, no. You have unleashed the beast. <laughs> <laughs> Peace, y'all. Somebody told me that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> that was one of the most exciting and fun conversation I have with anyone. What an incredible energy of someone who has so many different autoimmune diseases and still be able to turn everything to an incredible positive and taking care of her community by keeping pointing all her staff from the table at the finest and infectious energy. And you know if you visit her place, Pinewood, you get an experience. Well, thank you everyone for today. Thank you for being part of my experience today to be able to talk to the people in the food industry, giving back on Giving Back Tuesday and giving back every day to help all of us and to help your community out there, you guys. Do not forget, pick up the phone, order the food, go on an app, order from your local community, support them because it's a trickle down effect that affects so many people all the way from delivery people to the farmers who produce this food that we can nourish ourselves and be, be healthy and be strong. Thank you all very much for joining me.